Okay, we are back working on our end scale layout. Now, as most of you know, my most favorite part of the hobby is structure building. And I am so excited to start working on these buildings. You know, as a matter of fact, I think I'm just going to take a couple of these and head over to the workbench and start working on them. Um, and I'm thinking I might just work on this half of the layout. Just concentrate on this and then focus on this side. So we'll get a couple of structures built and then I'll get back to laying track, um, cutting the front section off here for our water and then also putting in water through here. Already you can see I'm doing some kit bashing. I'll go into detail on uh, what I've done to modify these kits. Okay, so we're going to combine this DPM kit and this Walters kit. It is from their Cornerstone series. Now this kit is so great for kit bashing because each section is separate. Uh, this would actually... It actually does take a long time to build this kit because, like I said, every section is separate. So you can build this in any configuration that you can come up with using all the different parts. And I'll show you how I modified mine. You'll see there's three sections in the front, but on this, there's only two sections on the roof and then they left off the third section. I took a section from the other side and added it. So we have three sections here and three sections in the front. Then I built this and I built this section from other walls from the kit and that will go like that and then there is a peaked roof that goes straight back right to the center of this section right here and then I took the back and we're gonna put that over here up on the roof and that peaked roof will go right to the center of this middle section right here. That way it'll just have, they'll be at the same height and it'll give it a uniformed look. And then of course there's lots of rooftop details and vents. Here is that peaked roof. So... If you cut that into three sections, one section will go over here, and then two sections will go on this one. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, we'll get to that eventually. First, what I'm going to do is spray this all with a reddish-brown primer. Okay, everything is painted and dry. Um, I'm actually going to let it dry for uh, actually a few more hours. I want it to be really good and dry um, before we do anything else to it. Next, what I'm doing is getting together all of the windows for both kits. And I was going to show you on this kit here, you can see all the extra parts that are still left. Um, we're going to be able to build probably a whole other structure out of this or kit bash it with another structure so that'll be fun that's it that's a that dpm is a great kit all right now this is going to take a little while but i need to figure out i suppose i could just paint these all rather than trying to count everything 
Um, but yeah, there's a lot of windows. Just <laughs> a lot of windows and doors. Um, here are all the windows for the... DPM kit. So you can see, you just paint them, glue your acetate to the back, and then put them in place. Okay, next let's start sponging on some brick colors. We're going to use burnt orange and French wine. Don't forget to rotate your sponge. You don't want to um, get a pattern on there. You want it to be very random. Now you don't want to get it too heavy or too thick on there. So if you do get a spot that's a little heavy, take um, a dry piece like the opposite side and just dab it make sure that you can see all the uh, mortar cracks that side's not done I just wanted to show you the difference okay I'm gonna go ahead and do all of this color and then we'll come back and do the French wine Okay, so we've done two colors so far. Maybe hard to see all the different shades. Next, we're going to do bittersweet chocolate. And we're going to do very, very little of this. This will just represent some of the dark random bricks on it this does take a lot of time for sure and it takes patience because towards the end of the wall you want to just hurry up and get on to the next one so you start dabbing it maybe a little heavier and you want to keep a consistent light tapping over the entire wall while making it random okay I'll go ahead and finish this and then we'll move on to um, all the mortar first after this dries we need to spray a dull coat over all of this. Let it dry really good. Then come back in with our uh, mortar. If you don't seal it, when this paint gets wet, it'll reactivate it. And all of your mortar will just turn a pink or orange color. I've decided to do one more color. It's called Rust Ochre. So I have a little here. I'm going to do very, very little of this. Okay, well, as you can see, it's pretty splotchy looking, and that's okay. This is just how we want it, because next, we're going to add mortar. But the first thing we have to do, this is the most important step. We have to spray a flat, 
clear coat over all of the brick and then let it dry let it dry for a few hours uh, then we'll add the mortar I wanted to quick show you that this is what I'm using for the um, clear coat Okay, I've sprayed all of my doors and windows and I decided to spray them with vintage teal. Now before I did this, I sprayed a clear coat on all of the bricks. So I'm letting that dry for a really long time. Now, um, I just sprayed this so I'm going to give this a little bit longer to dry and then we're going to use a sponge and just take some of the um, bittersweet chocolate or any dark brown and sponge on to make this look like it's uh, rusted metal. Okay, now we're adding rust to all this. And you want to be very, very delicate when doing this. And I found that you tend to be more delicate with sponging using tweezers rather than your fingers because you tend to dab it heavier. And a makeup sponge works really well for this. You want very, very fine dots. Okay, I've been working on all these doors and windows for a long time. I first went over everything with uh, a dark brown and a sponge and did some light sponging. I then mixed a reddish brown and like a yellow ochre, you can see here, and then just kept slowly adding water to it, thinning it, and doing rush streaks. Um, then I did desert turquoise and sea glass. About 50-50 I guess. And then started doing some dry brushing. And let me take the camera off and give you a little closer look. Um, you don't have to go into this much detail, but I really think it's going to really um, help the scale. So let me let me show you quick. Okay, next we're going to add our mortar, and I'm using a spackling compound. It's just like a white plaster. Um, I have two little cups here with just clear water. I'm going to cut another one. Now this one, uh, we need to mix this with some gray paint. I think I'm going to use neutral gray. And of course I'm almost out, but...
No, we have to work kind of fast because both this and acrylic paint dries pretty quick. Okay, let's start with this. You want to leave it heavier in the corners. Now don't worry if it's not in every single little crack. And you can always go back in and add some. Now I'm just using a damp, a damp clean brush and lightly going over some areas. Hopefully this is showing up good. Let me zoom in. Now I've had people tell me that they paint it gray or white first and then dry brush their brick over it. And you can do it that way. It works. Um, it might give you a newer looking structure. Um, I think it's much harder to do that in end scale because the bricks aren't raised that much. I prefer this look because it's more of an aged an aged look. And I prefer this technique in HO scale for the same reason. It just makes it look more aged. Okay, I'm starting to glue in my windows. And first I cut a whole bunch of pieces of acetate and glued them to the back. And then on these, I took some off-white paint and painted the back side so it looked like some of the windows have been patched in the factory. And you can see I've got my doors glued in place. Okay, let me get all of these windows. There's a lot, so it is definitely going to take me a while, but let me get all these glued in and then we'll move on to the next step. Well, as you can see, I'm getting all of the walls glued together. Now I've made these roof cards and I'm going to get those glued in next. And you can see I put in a eighth inch piece of strip wood to hold it and to glue it to. It actually took me a long time to figure out all the measurements for all this uh, mat board.
Okay, this part gets a little complicated just because um, it was longer. Like, that's a full piece right there. And you'll see there's some raised uh, ribs on here. And I needed to cut it on there so it looked natural. Well, it worked on this one for this length. Um, but this piece was a little short, so I actually had to cut some little pieces of plastic and glue on the end to make it the same length. Um, and then these, you can see, are shorter. And again, I used the same thickness of plastic and glued on the ends. And then... These were too short, so I just had to take some flat plastic um, and add to it to make it the same length. Same with these here. Um, I just had to add a piece at the end so it's the same length. So a little bit of figuring and measuring and more measuring <laughs> and more measuring to make sure that this all works. I probably should have built a little piece to put um, at the end here and at the end here. Uh, but I'm just going to try to glue these in place uh, just by holding it. I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but I'm going to try it this way. So that'll get glued on. And then I'll glue this from the back side like that. And then put the other little slanted roof on there. So, okay, wish me luck. <laughs> now something I've been doing while building this whole kit really is after I get my glue on there, just kind of dabbing it with the paper towel, just kind of spreading it out. Okay, now we have these little pieces. And then these little round ones get glued on top of them. Okay, I found it easier to build this one right here on the bench rather than trying to glue it all in place. Now it's time to start adding lots of details. And I have to say, I was a little disappointed. Um, all of the details for this kit are white metal. And they need a lot of cleanup. They're just not very good parts. So, um, there's some stuff, definitely some stuff that will work. Uh, but everything just has a lot of flashing on it. But there's a lot, there, there's a lot of detail parts. So, I'll see what um, resin ones I have. And I'll clean up some of these and get a gray primer sprayed on them. Um, it's just too bad that every piece needs to be cleaned up. And when I say cleaned up, there's just a lot of extra flashing. So you have to take your blade and scrape all that off. Okay, well, I'll work on some of these and uh, see what I can come up with. You know, I, do, I don't want to discourage people from getting this kit. Um, it, it, it's a great kit. 
the walls are incredible um, these white detail parts the white metal sorry white metal detail parts um, just need a lot of cleanup so if you want to take the time um, I have probably three or four different size files even even a bigger file like this um, it does go quick but every single casting needs cleanup I'll show you for example on these tanks I don't know if you can see all that extra flashing it all has to be cut off so you can maybe carve away the big pieces with a knife or I mean a blade and then go in with your file okay so I've got the top of that one done I don't know if you can see the difference but yeah it just takes it's a lot of work and I think I would rather just buy some 3d printed detail parts but but I did pay for these so I guess I'll take some time and at least clean up some of them okay I, I've cleaned up a few of these but um, it's a lot of work so I'm gonna put the rest away <laughs> but I cleaned up some pipes and some pallets and some little smokestacks yeah like I said it's kind of disappointing that's it's a lot of work to clean all those up okay I painted a bunch of details and glued them on We'll get more details up here on the roof. Um, we need to go in now with some pigments and do some weathering. And then I'd like to add some greenery, some vines growing up the side. Uh, just a little bit, not too much. Okay, actually, let's start doing some, um, adding some pigments to add some value to this. Okay, I've been doing a lot of weathering with some pigments and you can see I added a concrete dock here and one back here and those are cut out of pink styrofoam on my hot wire cutter and then I just added little strips of wood for little bumpers right there on the front. Um, let me take the camera off and show you where we're at. You know, I am not done with this. Um, I still need to add lots of details up here. It needs signs put on it. Um, I actually want to have some vines growing up the brick on the side. But I've got five days in this so far and I'm just burned out. I really am. Um, I just need a break from it. So this is as far as I'm going to go for now. and uh, But I'm sure we'll finish it up pretty soon. Okay, let me take the camera off and give you a closer look. 